Hey guys, welcome back to the Spiral of the Dragon Let's Play. We're now in part 5 and we will be traversing through Magic Crafters, the third home world of the entire game. And um, this one's a unique one. Uh, we first encounter a thief, it's the first thing we see. And then uh, after we get these gems off to the right, there's these funny looking guys with mustaches. And by far, I think in terms of quality and creativity, this is probably the most creative in the game. And it's really good. Welcome to Magic Crafters. I want you to release the dragons, reclaim our treasure, and recover the eggs from those pesky blue thieves. In terms of enemy design, level design, architecture, Magic Crafters is probably the most, I would say, wild, wacky, uh, cartoonish, and that's what I love about this place. There are these whatever they are, magician guys? The druids, that's what they are. Um, they're always just levitating platforms, levitating architecture, all that stuff, and it's awesome. I love Magic Crafters. Uh, I think when I was a kid, this was probably the furthest I got in the game before I just couldn't go any further. Uh, I couldn't tell you why though. I don't think it's that hard. It's just uh, it's a lot of new things that are thrown in here that may catch some new players off guard their first time playing the game, but honestly, it's it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I would say probably the hardest part about this is some of the supercharged sections. Uh, this is the first home world that they introduced, the supercharge and the mechanics of that and stuff like that, so it might be a little difficult for the first timers and stuff, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy to do. Um, that's one of the things they kept in the Reignited Trilogy was the supercharge mechanic, but in that game, they changed a lot of stuff from, uh, at least from the first game. In the first game, the supercharge was handled a lot different, and I'll explain that once I get this dragon here. Once I get this dragon here. When you see arrows like these, you can charge along with them to begin a supercharge. Supercharge? Excellent. Go ahead, try it. So in the first Spyro game, this is where the Supercharge was introduced. Uh, what makes it different from the other two games in the series is that it has kind of like a level up or like different stages of charging and they're indicated by the color of the smoke, the, uh, the smoke trails that follow Spyro as you're charging. Uh, level 1 is like the white smoke, level 2 is yellow, level 3 is red smoke. and. Depending on which level you're at, you can do different things. Uh, or, well, not do different things, but you can go much further uh, after jumping off a ramp, or jumping off a ledge, or jumping off really anything. Uh, you get extra height, distance, all that stuff, and you can travel much farther if you're at level 3 and stuff like that. So, really cool mechanic. This portal leads to a special place where you can learn to fly. I remember when I was a young dragon, earning my wings. Learn to fly. Got it. So there's three stages to the charging, and in Reignited Trilogy, they decided to bring that concept back for all three games. So some instances where you're supercharging in, like, say, the speedways in Spiral 2, or even Spiral 3 for that matter, uh, things might be a little different, and uh, you might not make some jumps that you would normally make in the original games and stuff like that, so that's one bit of criticism that people had with the new game, was that they kept that mechanic, which was cool initially, but with the the altered levels, the new levels in Spiral 2 and 3, it was, uh, didn't really function all too well, so uh, take that as you will. It was still functional, it was still playable, it wasn't anything bad or anything, but it, it just was different. It wasn't the same, you know. Uh, these electric wizards uh, can sometimes catch me off guard because once I charge into one, the other one's still there and uh, they're pretty quick. I don't know. They shoot that electric thing really fast and if you're not paying attention, they usually catch me off guard. I always get a hit in every now and then, but... Anyway guys, we got all 300 gems in Magic Crafters, the home world, and now we're going to our first level, which will be Alpine Ridge. Uh, in terms of the level, uh, not the levels, but the order in which I do these levels, I usually try to work my way from the front to the back of the, the home world. Just for the sake of, I don't know, it just feels like I'm doing things in order instead of out of order.
everyone has their own way of playing this game. That's why this game is, well, just really all of them, is very accessible because you can basically just choose whatever level you want to play first. Uh, I think the first game that, that I've seen that concept with was like Crash 2. Uh, there were like different tiers, but you can do any level you wanted basically. You can start from level 5 if you wanted to and work your way backwards. So Spiral has that same concept where you can literally just go into whatever you want. Um, but it's really cool. So that beast guy ended up going on the top of that platform. I don't know how, uh, but now I can't get that blue gem unless I go up here. So I'm going to get rid of this guy that's making those stairs go up and down and get the gems up here and just get it that way. That's never happened to me before. It's like a, I wouldn't say it's a glitch, but I think the guy just clipped up to the top of that platform and made it that way. So I'm just going to get that and continue moving. Alpine Rage is noticeably... Spyro! You're not afraid of those big, noisy, gigantic, awful beasts, are you? Of course not! I didn't think so. That dragon's one of my favorites. Um, what I was gonna say was what that dragon just stated. Uh, this level is famous for the beasts. Uh, and, not gonna lie, they're kind of frightening. Uh, they're really huge, and they have a few sound effects that make them really intimidating, but... Uh, I, I think they're really cool, honestly. Uh, we don't really see enemies that big throughout the game, so getting to see them here in base, what's essentially the first level of this homeworld is just a testament, really, <laughs> to what's to come. These huge wizards, guys, all they do is just shoot these spears at you. Um, if there's three of them at once, just go after one after the other, because you try to... Well, basically... Once you're going after one, make sure to dodge the one that the other two are throwing at you, otherwise you'll get hit, so. This part's really easy, just time it and get up to the top. I love that they just run around like this. Uh, every time I play the game, I just watch them just run around. It's really funny. Um, they brought that back in Reignited, which... Thank you, developers. The, these are things that we look forward to and stuff, so. Yeah, those beasts. Um, I can't remember as a kid exactly my reaction to these things, but I... Don't imagine them being good. Honestly, thinking about it now, that's probably the reason why I didn't finish this game, because the things that they were throwing at me were very frightening, slash wacky, slash very surreal. And I was like, nope, I'm not interested in this. And yeah, so uh, my first Spiral game was Spiral 3, uh, You're the Dragon. That was the first video game I ever played, ever owned. Um, wasn't the first game I beat, though. I didn't beat that game till about, jeez, I want to say like five years ago or something. Uh, I was around a teenager in high school when I first beat that game for the first time, so... Um, I didn't get Spyro 1 until much later, guys. Much, much later. But it's a great game. Oh, thank you for releasing me. One game that this game does get slack for sometimes is the variation in terms of the dragons that you rescue, because... In this game, there are 80 dragons, and among those 80 dragons, there's only like, I want to say like 20 dragon designs? Not even, it's probably less than that, but uh, in terms of variety of the dragons that you release and stuff, it can get kind of, I don't want to say boring, but it's not pleasing to the eye to just see the same dragon model with a different color uh, each time that you free one, so... Uh, Toys for Bob did a great job remaking all the dragons and reignited to make them look, well, really all of them look very different from each other, and they all have a different voice actor, which is great. Um, I don't know how many dragons in this game have the same voice actor from each other. I'm pretty sure there's one voice actor that voiced like five dragons and uh, another voice actor that voiced another five dragons and stuff like that. But um, in terms of reignited trilogy, I think pretty sure that all the dragons had their own voice actor. Um, I could be wrong about that because there are, like I said, 80 dragons in the game, so that'd be quite a feat if there were 80 voice actors. Great work, Spyro. If you keep this up, you'll learn all the tricks of the Magic Crafter world. And by tricks, I think he means just supercharging and like the super flame power ups that we'll get later, but we're not there yet. <laughs> This is probably the hardest part of the level right here. Um, basically what you have to do is, once you get those chests, 
once you flame those chests, they each go off individually, but... Um, what makes it more difficult is the platforms that you're on, and those platforms are kind of far off from each other, so you might die a couple times, but... Um, let me get this dragon. Remember that these blue thieves haven't stolen eggs only in the Magic Crafter world. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. Yeah, those platforms I'll get after later. Let me get these gems here first, but... Um, I think what makes the first game, at least to me, one of my favorites is the platforming challenges, which, if, to be quite honest, aren't really in the second or third games. There's platforming, but there's not really platforming challenges. The challenges in those games are more towards specific uh, challenges that are scattered throughout the worlds, in which, uh, after completing them, you either get an egg or an orb, depending on if you're playing the second or third game. But in this game, it was all about platforming and gliding and making sure that you don't die, <laughs> basically. Um, we got all 500 gems, so I'm just gonna uh, show you guys that, and then I guess exit the level, because the exit portal is really far away. But yeah, uh, in terms of challenge, the first game, most of its challenge was just pure platforming, gliding, and also finding collectibles as well, because there are a lot of collectibles, uh, whew, can't say that word, collectibles in this game that are quite hard to find. If you guys remember in the beginning of the level, uh, I basically had to go up here and go to the left to glide to the right and find some gems that were very obscured by the camera, and if you don't know that on your first try, it might be a bit difficult. High Caves is a very unique level in that there are these metal spider things that you can't immediately kill because, well, they're kind of considered like big enemies, like these big wizard guys, and they have metal, and you can't charge big enemies, and you can't flame metal, so we won't be able to get rid of those guys until later in the level, um, but in the meantime, there's these new enemies, which Basically, it's just shoot tornadoes. If you want to dodge them, just go to this little corner here in the edges. Um, wait for them to throw one, and then continue. Uh, I don't know. I, every run I do with this game, it's always different. I either always get hit by those, or I don't. But it just depends. Please do something about these green druids. They insist on moving everything in sight. Yeah, so that was the dragon that gave them those names of uh, the Green Druids. I was having some trouble thinking about it earlier, but yeah, that's what they're called. And they're really awesome. Very unique level uh, enemy design, and I appreciate that. But yeah, those metal spiders that we saw earlier, we can't get rid of those until we get a super flame power-up later in the stage. And um, actually, not even a super flame power-up. Uh, there's this section where... Instead of using the super flame for something like that, you use charging. And if you get them all on the first try, it's really satisfying. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Uh, one thing I did do was die. Uh, yeah, if you glide if you glide as it's moving right, uh, you're not going to make that. It's pretty much way too far out. So just wait for it to come to you and then you should be fine. That's actually really embarrassing. I normally don't die in these games all that much because I... Well, first off, they're not very hard at all. <laughs> very easy games if you know what you're doing. Um, the real only the real only challenge is when you're going for 100%. Because uh, there's some, like I was saying earlier, obscure parts of the stages that you might not think to look at on your first run through. Um, the reason I went back to flame that thing was because in Reignited Trilogy they added a painting over there where you can get a skill point. So thought I'd do it here, even though it's not there. But for the sake of showing that Spiral One does get skill points later, I decided to show that off just because. I hate those bugs. When I become big and strong, like you, I'll squash them all. Until then, remember that supercharge makes you invincible. And so that's the dragon that explains to us what we have to do. We basically have to use the supercharge to to knock them out, you know. Um, and that's the only way to get rid of them, unless we had a super flame, which both ways of killing those enemies are in this level, so that's very unique. Um, uh, what was I talking about earlier? I was talking about the bugs, then I transitioned to talk about something else. Oh, 
what I wanted to say was that dragon, or well, when Spyro was talking to that dragon, Spyro said, if I was big and strong like you, I'd squash them all. My question is, why don't those big dragons help out Spyro? Like, I, like throughout the game, they're telling Spyro how to do things, but the, the dragons themselves don't help at all. They don't even help with the enemies or anything like that. So, begs the question, why don't they help? I don't understand, but it, it's probably because they have a fear of getting crystallized again, which I think a drag, another dragon brings up much later in the game, but if that's the case, then they're just, uh, I don't know. What's this? <laughs> no other word for that. That thief can be very difficult to get if you don't do what I did. Um, because there's water in the middle and for some reason some of the water in this game just hurts you. It takes off a skill uh, hit point. So just do what I did. Just glide at like kind of an angle. Kind of to the left of it. And you should get it on your first go. Getting all of this, what I'm doing right now, on your first go is awesome. Because that means less backtracking. So... Uh, I got lucky in my recording and I managed to get all of them in one swoop. Sometimes it's hard to do because the spiders are not always lined up that way. Sometimes they're like to the left or to the right. And you might have to reposition yourself uh, to get them all in one go. So I was lucky there and I got them. So that's awesome. Don't have to backtrack and do that charge sequence again. So that's really good. Make sure to check these areas very thoroughly because since it's in a cave, there's a lot of these pillars that are kind of blocking some gems, so make sure you check around them and stuff, otherwise you might miss a few. So this second section, uh, there are these green druids and there's the spiders. Uh, if you try to go to the opening there, you won't be able to because the druid closes the, the, the pathway. So what you gotta do basically is just get the druids first get them out of there and you got to do it quick too because otherwise those spiders will catch up to you and then that's kind of scary so here's the second way to defeat those spiders is the super flame from this uh, fairy's kiss and that's it you just flame them and that's it very easy uh it'd be nice if there was a fairy earlier on that we can get rid of the earlier spiders but uh that's the only fairy here so it is not permanent though so you got to do it quick um Thankfully though, you really only need it for those two spiders. Um, the ones from before, technically you can use the super flame to get rid of those two, but I don't think I've done that before. <laughs> I don't even know if it lasts that long for you to be able to get rid of them. So definitely get rid of them for the supercharge and then go for the super flame later. Oof, I decided to leave that dragon for later. <laughs> That's one thing about pre-recording is that I'm not sure when I'm going to do things, when I'm not going to do things. Unless I look at the video beforehand, but if I did that for every video, that would just, you know, waste time and stuff. But yeah, but yeah, sorry about that, guys. I, I just, I'm more comfortable pre-recording games and then just commentating over them. That's just how I roll. Um, yeah, like I said, it, that's more for like RPGs if I wanted to talk in real time and stuff like that, but... For the sake of these games that I've played for a while, um, and I need to concentrate on finding everything, yeah, it's just better if I do it um, not pre-recording, you know, so. I might do it for a future Let's Play of Spyro that I will not say, because that's a surprise, but uh, that'll come much, much later. That'll be after I finish these three games, and it'll be a lot of fun. If you guys have any questions about how I'm emulating all this, or what I need to do, or what specs I'm running and stuff, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I try to read all comments, and if you guys drop one, I'll 90% certain that I'll read it and I'll reply, you know. I know a lot of YouTubers, they get way too many comments to reply to, but I'm kind of new here. <laughs> well, in terms of updating content regularly and stuff, I've had this account since 2009, but if you guys have any questions, Drop a comment and I'll reply. Very quick. But yeah, we got everything. Let's get our last dragon. Try combining supercharge with jumping and gliding and really explore the high caves. Uh, yes, Mr. Dragon, sir. We already did that. We got all the dragons, all the gems, jumping and gliding. Too easy. Piece of cake. That was the first half of Magic Crafters. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys liked the content. Make sure to leave a like. And uh, like I said earlier, drop a comment. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great night. Take care.